Jesus has walked with his disciples from the upper room, down through the streets of Jerusalem, down the Kidron Valley, and up toward uh, the Mount of Olives. He's going to uh, sit down in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's going to pray. On his way, he's praying still. He's praying and he's teaching and his disciples are hearing and learning. Uh, they're finding strength, but now he prays that they would find joy. In John chapter 17, Jesus gets alone with the Father, and he talks to God, his disciples over here. And the theme of that prayer is that he would do, Jesus would do what God had called him to do, and then that the disciples would live out their lives the way that God had given them to live out their lives, and that you and I would experience joy as we follow after Jesus and fulfill the mission that God has given us. In verse 13 of John 17, Jesus said, but now I come to you, talking to the Father, but now I come to you, Father, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. You know what? Jesus truly gives us all the joy we need. He gives us joy in purpose for living. In John 17, verses 1 through 5, listen to the purpose that Jesus had. Jesus spoke these words, lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also might glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I've finished the work you've given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. And Jesus lived to fulfill the mission of giving eternal life to others. He lived to bring glory to the Father. And that is the purpose that we have in this life. The same purpose that Jesus had, glorifying God and sharing the good news of eternal life with others, is the same purpose that we have. In John chapter 17, verse 10, Jesus said, All mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. The reason that we live on this earth as followers of Jesus is so that we might glorify him. Verse 18, he says, Father, as you have sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. Today, you and I have a purpose for living, and there is joy in living in that purpose. You and I were created to glorify God, and we were created to share the good news of his rescuing love with others. A joyful church, a joyful follower of Jesus is one who is committed to glorify God uh, by continuing Christ's mission on the earth. We have joy in a purpose that gives us uh, life and hope and and peace and a mission to fulfill. We have joy in the power of Christ's work in us. As Jesus began to pray for his followers, he revealed how that he had shared eternal life and the pathway to a joyful life. In verse six, he says, I've manifested your name uh, to the men whom you have given to me out of, the, out of the world. Jesus unveiled God to his followers and, and by the mission of his followers, Jesus has unveiled God to you and to me. To know our creator is to uh, fill us with a, a sense of power and strength. To know God intimately and personally connects us with the power of God at work in the world and in our lives. We find joy as we embrace the words of Jesus that equip us and fulfill us with his purpose and and with his power. Christ has worked in us to bring us into fellowship and intimacy with God. That, that work, that work that Jesus has done gives us joy. And also we have joy in the Father's protection. We've talked about his help, but do you know that God is committed to protect us? That's what Jesus prayed in verses 15 through 17. He said, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They're not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. We live in hostile territory, even today as followers of Jesus. We're in a battle, but it's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle, and we need God's help every single day. Jesus 
teaches us to pray for God's help. And when we pray for God's help, he delivers. We have joy in purpose. We have joy in Christ's work. We have joy in God's help. And we have joy in the powerful love that God gives. When we're consumed by God's love, we live in joy. Look at verses 25 and 26. Jesus said, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known you, uh, and known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The wondrous message that gives us joy is that God sent Jesus on a rescue mission. And by his death on a cross, for my sin, taking the punishment that I deserved, I'm wrapped up in this glorious love of God, and I receive new life through faith in Christ. The Father loved the Son, and his love empowered Jesus to fulfill this mission of rescue. The love of the Father pours through his Spirit to us, Christ's followers, so that we may live immersed in that love, so that we might declare God's glory and life to our world. A joyful follower of Jesus is one who is consumed by God's love uh, that has been delivered to us through Jesus Christ. So live in that love. Joy belongs to us because we belong to Jesus. We have a purpose, we have power, we have protection, and we have God's love. So let's live in that love and let's declare his goodness to all we encounter.